Well, I'd like to welcome myself and you back to LaGuardia Airport. Today's not the greatest day for flying in New York City, but I'll make the most out of it. I'm excited about my destination, PBI, Palm Beach International Airport in Florida. This will be the very first time I'm bringing PBI to this channel, and I can't wait to provide a comprehensive look into the journey from gate to gate. I sure hope the weather in South Florida is better than the weather here in the Big Apple. Clearly, I won't be bringing you amazing New York City views, but it's a whole new approach and landing later on. After passing through TSA, I made my way to the Delta Sky Club for the views of the Terminal C ramp, but more importantly to check out the ceiling. No, not the ceiling of the Sky Club, but the ceiling of the base of the clouds. It's low really low, and looking at the departures off of runway 13, I can see that aircraft are only below the clouds for a matter of seconds before entering the white suit. Today's not a great day for flying. There's bad weather here, but it's nice down in Florida today. Runway 13 is the departure runway today, and I'm thinking about today's climb out, the tennis climb and initial departure fix of white, which will take us south to New Jersey, but there really won't be a lot to see today leaving the metropolitan New York City area. A lot of planes were taking off on runway 13, and the ramp outside the Sky Club here at Terminal C cleared out completely. That's something I've never seen here before. But before I knew it, arrivals from runway 4 started to populate this area. My flight will arrive down there at gate 84 in the old D terminal, now part of Terminal C. After grabbing some donuts, I decided to leave the Sky Club. Let's head on over to PBI. Will I need those sunglasses in Florida? My plane is arriving, and I'm leaving the Sky Club now. I'll admit, I get restless at LaGuardia, and I just want to take it all in. So today, my flight is leaving from the old D gates, and as you can see from behind me, I'm actually in the newer part of the terminal. I want to get a different view of my aircraft before I get on it, and I just want to spend some time in some of the more modern areas of the airport because the old D gates are pretty old. This is just beautiful. I might be the only person at this airport who purposely went to another concourse to experience that concourse and see his plane from a different angle. Yeah, I really don't need to be here right now, but I just can't resist. And there she is, November 125 Delta November, a two-year-old A321. More and more flights I take seem to be on the A321 these days out of LaGuardia. All right, it may seem like that aircraft is pretty close, but in order to get to the old D-Gate area, I've got a lot of walking to do. I'll need to go through a temporary tunnel walkway to get to the old D-Gate, so let's head on over there now because my flight is boarding soon. And it's back up the escalator I just went down. No one is here for the reason why I am. Guaranteed. That's my A321 over there. This one over here is November 301 DV, Delta's very first A321. I recently took a flight on that exact aircraft. Don't forget to check out that video. The DV stands for David Vergias, who was part of the ferry flight of this aircraft from Europe to the USA. Unfortunately, he passed about a year after this plane was delivered, so they changed the tail number in his honor. I'm headed to the east to get to my gate in the old Terminal D. This is a low walk. The alleyway you see here is brand new between two new concourses, but I'm headed to one of the older buildings that still is not yet demolished. The 1980s is still around as I step into the old Terminal D here at LaGuardia. Every time my flight is assigned a gate in this particular terminal, and it's been often, I wonder how much longer it'll be here. All right, I made it to the gate here. I'm glad that I was able to see my aircraft before because I can only see from here part of the tail of the aircraft. Not a very good view, but this gate area is indeed going away soon. That's it. That's all I can see of my plane to PBI today. I might as well take a seat because there's not much to see out the window. And as usual, I'm delayed. With so many planes flying to West Palm Beach and flying up and down the eastern seaboard, flow control has been implemented and we have to wait for a departure slot time now. I'm excited about leaving LaGuardia Airport, of course, on a departure. However, I'm not excited about the low visibility. The ceiling does look like it's lifted a little bit, but I really don't think I'm going to be able to see much today. Okay, boarding time has come. All right, let's head on over to PBI. I'm once again about to take another seat on an A321, and this time, like many times, I'm bypassing the larger and extra legroom seats for the rear of the aircraft. It's comfy back there. Since the weather isn't good at all at LaGuardia, my seat selection today is more focused on the approach to PBI, and since the wind is coming from the east, I expect to land at PBI to the east, which means that after our descent over the ocean, we'll head inland for a left traffic pattern to the runway, hence my seat on the left side of the plane. I'm hoping for the coveted view of the airport before we land. Here at LaGuardia, I'm having trouble focusing out the window. With light drops on the water on the window, the camera isn't really sure what to focus on. 
At times it focuses on the window drops, and at other times it successfully focuses on the subject that I'm trying to film, like this nearly 5 year old Delta A220. Don't forget to check out the videos on this channel where I fly on that aircraft type. It's now time for the obligatory announcement from the captain. Note that this video was filmed at the end of 2023, so he offers a New Year greeting. Good afternoon, everyone from the uh, flight deck here, Light Tower. Our welcome board, Delta 1016, over to West Palm Beach. Uh, two hours, 32 minutes of flying time today. That's a wheels up to wheels down time. And uh, apologies for the little bit of a late departure here uh, due to uh, weather that's kind of moved through the, the entire east coast of the United States down into Florida. It's kind of passed through the uh, all the flight paths down there, so it's caused some traffic backup. So air traffic control has assigned us a control takeoff time here, uh, about 39 minutes from now. So that's why we uh, why we delayed the, the boarding here, um, just to wait our, our place in line here to take off down to Florida. There's a lot of air traffic moving down that way. So we're gonna do our best to go uh, just as quickly and safely down there. It shouldn't be too much of a delay, but we'll give you a better idea once we get airborne. Also, unfortunately, due to all that weather, there's some pretty bumpy rides up at our cruise altitudes. We're going to do our best to find you a nice, smooth ride uh, as much as possible. But we do expect uh, quite a few bumps on the way down there. I've asked the flight attendants to keep their seats until we can find a smooth ride. So there may be uh, a delayed uh, service uh, in the cabin service if we can even uh, get one provided. But we'll do our best uh, to get everything uh, uh, just as smooth and safe for you down there to Florida. We do appreciate you flying today. Hope you're uh, having a great end of year 23. We wish you a very happy new year as well. Welcome on board. See that runway 13 departure out there? That's where we're headed, to the low clouds over Flushing Bay. But we have to wait for aircraft behind us to move before we can push. Here, there's a couple airplanes in the alleyway behind us blocking the, blocking the path here. So we're just trying to get some traffic cleared out of the way before we push. That's what we're waiting on here. Should be just a few more minutes here. Thanks for your patience. Okay, everything is clear now. We can safely push back onto the ramp behind us. If you want better quality and more in-focus videos, just go back and check out my previous departures from LaGuardia where it wasn't raining. I filmed them all here on this channel. Cabin lighting will be dimmed for the duration of the flight. For additional lighting, please utilize the reading light that is located in the overhead panel directly over your seat. It's not easy to focus. Here's our route for the hop down the U.S.'s eastern seaboard today. LaGuardia Ground Control has given us instructions to taxi to runway 13. We'll get there via taxiways Alpha and Echo, and at Echo we'll have to hold short of runway 4 since runway 4 is the landing runway today. Taxiway Echo is located at the midway point of the 7,000 foot long runway, and we'll cross the runway at that point to allow arrivals to clear the runway to the right, rather than us crossing the runway at a point where airplanes vacate the runway, which will be in a straight path to runway 13. You can see here traffic landing on runway 4, and at this point at Taxiway Echo, it's moving too fast to clear the runway, so it's at this point where we can cross the runway. The ground controller has given us instructions to cross runway 4 in Taxiway Echo, which brings us to the western side of the airport where runway 13 is located. There's no way to get to this part of the airport except by crossing runway 4. Once we're on the other side, we'll turn right to the runway. spot here? If you know this airport well, this is where Donald Trump's 757 is usually parked, but today it's in PBI. That's where we're headed. We'll see it in my departure video out of PBI later. All right, folks, we're number two for takeoff flight. Jesse, we for departure. Okay, we're almost there. Let's just make a right-hand turn onto runway 13. We're now on the local control tower frequency, and I'm finally able to focus to bring a clear takeoff to you. Of course, we won't see much today, but at least I've got the takeoff covered. We'll be issued takeoff clearance only when the tower sees that the coast is clear on runway 4. This means that the most recent arrival on runway 4 has cleared runway 4 after landing, and there's no aircraft on really short final that could possibly interfere with our departure. Once we take off today, we'll fly the tennis climb, which will call for a straight out climb out, followed by a turn to the northeast. This keeps us away from JFK airspace ahead. Let's roll on runway 13 into the soup.
Over Flushing Bay, we enter the clouds. I'll speed this part up. It'll just be a series of left turns for us to get to White, our initial departure fix over New Jersey. There's really nothing to see here, and I'm disappointed because my seat is on the left-hand side of the plane, and that would afford me a great view of LaGuardia Airport as we turn to the left, and if we turn wide enough, I'd be able to see Manhattan. But the fact is that the weather is not cooperating for us today, but in my mind, I know there's a massive city down there. Just check out some of my previous videos. So what do I do when I can't see down? I look up for other planes like this flight to JFK that just flew the Lendy arrival staying above us before descending to JFK. For us, it's time for clearance to White Intersection over New Jersey so we can proceed on course. We actually climbed higher shortly after I said that. The climb lacked a view down until over southern New Jersey, where I got to see part of the Jersey Shore. But clouds prevailed, so I spent my time looking for other planes, like this American Airlines A321 from Orlando descending into Philadelphia. Okay, we're climbing higher now. We're starting to get knocked around. It's fun. Finally, some rough air. All too often, flights these days have just been too smooth for me. This was a real old-fashioned flight, the way I like it, with some bumps. We're flying. But there's still no view of the land below because of the clouds. Rehoboth Beach is down there. I know it's there, I just can't see it. The map on the seat in front of me helps identify our location. But I'm not giving up. I paid for a window, so I'm using it for the entire flight from gate to gate. When I'm up here, everyone is equal, so why not look to see who our neighbors are? No, not the stranger in the seat next to me. Other airplanes in the air. Like this Embraer Legacy flying from Orlando to Montreal in Canada. And headed to Orlando is this JetBlue A320 from Boston's Logan Airport. This JetBlue A220 is en route to Boston from Key West. Boston is very popular today. This Delta 737 is headed there from Aruba. Okay, we're now level of flight level 360, and even though I can't see much down there, I'm enjoying spotting air traffic in the airspace. This JetBlue Embraer 190 is flying from Sarasota to JFK. And as we make a turn, I'm afforded a view of Frontier's A320 called Summer of Swan flying from Orlando to Iceland. I'm loving the color of the clouds below as we continue along with some added vectors due to the high amount of traffic headed down south today. This flight occurred during a very heavily traveled holiday season and we simply could just not follow the published path all the way down to PPI today. Do these pink clouds make up for the lack of New York City views? Absolutely not, but they're nice to look at. We've started the water portion of our flight. From this point on, we're going to head out over the Atlantic Ocean rather than follow the coastline down to the Sunshine State. And while out here, I saw a Southwest 737 flying from Fort Lauderdale to Iceland. And there on the top left is an American A321 from Montego Bay, Jamaica to Philadelphia. Here's a JetBlue A320 from Miami to Newark. It's starting to get dark out, so it'll be hard to see other planes from now on. Isn't it great to know how many neighbors we have up here? The Air Route Traffic Control Center is doing a fine job treating us equitably and safely apart from each other. It was so great to see so many planes from up here. As to the stranger sitting next to me, I couldn't even tell you what that person looked like. We're ready for the Clement II arrival. The Clement II arrival is an arrival procedure for flights coming in from the north, like us, and the Miami Air Route Traffic Control Center monitors our progress before we're handed off to Palm Beach Approach Control. Seatbelt's going to stay up for the seatbelt line. Seatbelt's going to stay up for the rest of the flight here. We do expect uh, just a few light bumps in the descent, but nothing too bad. Again, okay, really appreciate you flying with us. Appreciate your business here. Delta, hope to see you back with us again in the near future. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask about tickets. Thanks for the captain. We're around. Thank you. Unlike the warning from the captain, I hardly felt any bumps on approach. Okay, we are approaching the West Palm Beach International Airport. We'll be making a right-hand turn to join a left downwind, then make a left base leg toward the runway. I'm taking in all I can take in right now because in a moment the flight attendants are going to put the lights on and I won't be able to see out. The flight attendants turn on the cabin lights to do cabin safety checks. It's an important safety procedure, but makes looking out the window really difficult. Those lights better go off soon. We're about to make landfall. 
Alas, before we flew over the Florida coast, the lights were dimmed again. They're going off. There wasn't too much to see on the left side of the plane. The right side provided a view of the coast, but I was able to see another country from this side, part of the Bahamas, but it was very tough to capture on camera during this night approach. Our nose is pointed directly at Juneau Beach in Palm Beach County as we begin to capture sight of the Barrier Islands off of Florida with the mainland directly behind it. We're headed towards Palm Beach Gardens on a southwestern heading. Approach control is setting us up for a downwind leg. The airport is in our approximate 11 o'clock position, and today we'll be landing on runway 10 left, which needs to be approached from the west, so soon we'll be making a right-hand turn to head to the west, then turn back around via a left-hand turn directly to the runway. I'm glad we've got a view here, since we had no view departing LaGuardia. We're looking down southeast Florida's coast, and we can see the lights from the northern part of the Miami-Fort Lauderdale-West Palm Beach Metropolitan Statistical Area. This is a heavily populated area, with the greatest part of population beginning here in Palm Beach, all the way down to Miami. Palm Beach itself lies on the Barrier Island, while West Palm Beach occupies the mainland. Our destination airport is physically west of West Palm Beach, but it's officially called the Palm Beach International Airport, although when I boarded this flight at LaGuardia, the sign said West Palm Beach. Technically, the airport is located in unincorporated Palm Beach County, adjacent to West Palm Beach, but it's accepted for people to call the airport West Palm Beach Airport, Palm Beach Airport, or just PBI, its airport code. We're under the control of the Palm Beach Terminal Radar Approach Controller, who is clearing us down to lower altitudes and is about to have us turn to the right to join the left downwind leg to head west, which is in the opposite direction that we'll be landing in. This right-hand turn will put us onto the final traffic pattern to the airport before we're fully lined up with the runway. This flight occurred during the busy holiday season, but there were a lot of airplanes coming into PBI at this time. This is going to have an effect on our flight and when we can touch down. You see, even though the airport is just off our left side, we won't touch down for another 15 minutes. Yes, that's 15, one, five minutes. There is a lot of traffic approaching this airport from two directions. First, there are planes that are coming in from the west, flying directly toward the runway, and there are also planes coming in from the north doing exactly what we're doing, flying past the airport, then turning around to land, joining those aircraft that flew the straight and approach. All aircraft have to be safely separated, and the approach controller needs to ensure that aircraft that are coming in from our direction can fit between arrivals that are flying the straight and approach. Once there's a sufficient gap between arrivals from the west, the controller can turn a flight like ours to the left toward the runway. There may not be any arrivals at all from the west, and there could be lots of arrivals flying our path, but the more airplanes there are doing what we're doing, the further out we'll have to go. And we just happen to be approaching the airport when everyone is coming in at once. We're going to go quite a distance on this heading due to the high volume. Remember the slight delay we took at LaGuardia? This long downwind leg is clear evidence of how ATC needed to take action before we even took off so we could still get a chance to land. Still, we have to go very far out to the west before we can come back. Our flight is late to begin with, and this extended leg will make the flight land even later. But it's not only arrivals ahead of us that are delaying us. You see, we're coming in for a landing at Palm Beach's longest runway, and not only is this runway being used for landing traffic, but there are also some departing flights that need to use this runway for takeoff this evening. And departures can only be accommodated between arrivals. Therefore, the gap between arrivals not only needs to be big enough to safely separate flights, but there needs to be enough room to get departing flights out between some arrivals. This spells more separation and a longer time to land. Fortunately, our controller is not responsible for the departures. That's the work of the tower cab controller, but this controller needs to set up the arriving flights at the appropriate intervals so that the tower controller has the space needed to accommodate a departure once an arrival has cleared the runway, providing that the next arriving flight is not too close for landing. This is getting complicated. As for us, as we continue along, we get cleared down to lower altitudes. We're much higher than where we would be if there was less traffic. If there was less traffic, we would be lower and we would have turned to the left sooner, but we can't due to the volume. As we proceed further west and descend, you'll see that as we move away from the shore of the Atlantic Ocean, the population density decreases. Most people live and work closer to the ocean in southern Florida, and the sprawl of city life eventually gives way to natural areas of wildlife. Our nose is pointed directly toward the southern point of Lake Okeechobee, the largest lake in Florida, and if we were to keep up this heading, we could be there in a matter of minutes. We won't be going out that far, but a car ride from West Palm Beach to the lake's south shore would take one hour for a perspective. 
Not only is the controller who's handling our flight assigning us lower stepped altitudes, we're also being given speed restrictions. As flights get closer to landing, they need to slow down, eventually winding up at landing speed. So the controller gives new speeds to reduce to, not just to get to landing speed, but to ensure that all planes on the same part of the approach are going the same speed so that they don't get too close to each other. It's a lot of work for one person on the ground. But we're going to be with this controller until we're much closer to the runway and lined up. It's at that point when we'll be handed off to someone in the control tower at the airport. The control tower will issue us clearance to land. As we continue along in this heading, my eyes are constantly looking for aircraft that are already on the straight-in final approach course to our left. It's dark, and they're hard to see sometimes, and reflections on the window at night can make it really tough to capture them on camera. Looking for these planes can assist in determining how far out we'll go. If you can see many planes, chances are we'll be going out far. These planes will be lower than us since they're already on the final approach course. I'm also thinking about how we're going out so far and this is the furthest I've ever flown out in a South Florida airport. I've flown many times into Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Both airports have runways that run east-west, just like this airport, which means the approach to landing to the east is pretty much just like this. With all the approaches I've made to Fort Lauderdale and Miami, this is by far the furthest to the west that I had to go. This surprised me a bit because Fort Lauderdale and Miami are busier airports than PBI, but then I thought about their capacity. With parallel runways, both of those airports can get more planes in at once. PBI does have a parallel runway to the runway that we'll land on, however, it's really short at just over 3,000 feet, and planes like this A321 cannot land on that runway. There's also a diagonal runway, but it intersects with the runway that we'll be landing on. So what can we do? Well, there's no room for us yet, so we have to continue along to the areas of Florida that aren't very populated as we watch the lights below us nearly vanish. There's not that much to see here, so I'll speed this part up until we turn our base leg. Okay. It's our time to turn left to head south in a left base leg. The approach controller finally has room for us behind the previous traffic, so we're issued a turn to the left. We're really far from the airport, but this is the only way to get us in tonight. To get to the runway, we'll be making three turns rather than one continuous turn back around. These three turns will allow us to be separated behind the traffic in front of us, and they'll allow us to intercept the final approach course on a decent angle. The left turns occur very far from PBI, and there's not much to point out below. However, as a passenger on the left-hand side of the plane, we will know exactly what to expect the rest of the way, since we had been looking at the final approach course the entire time. In a few moments, we'll be on it, looking north as we head east to the airport. There should be nothing new to us in terms of the view. The only difference is that we'll be flying in the opposite direction, but we'll be a lot lower. And by the time we're on short final, we'll be just hundreds of feet over the ground. But it's going to take a while to get to the runway. We still have seven and a half minutes to go until we touch down. And remember, we initially saw the airport eight minutes ago. This is a long path to get to the runway. And right now we're over the least scenic part. And since there isn't that much down there, I'll speed up this part a bit until we get to a more developed area with lights. Finally, there's more to see here, but we've seen it before, just from its other side looking south. We're looking north now, and the runway is directly in front of us. We have about two and a half minutes left till touchdown. Now that we're established, the Palm Beach Approach Controller hands us off to the control tower, who will clear us to land once everything is clear for us. Remember that there could be flights ahead of us using runway 10 left as a departure runway. Although we've seen it before, this time we'll get a closer up view of Loxahatchee Gardens, Royal Palm Beach, Golden Lakes, Lake Belvedere Estates, and Haverhill before we touch down on the 10,001 foot long runway. While rolling out, we'll cross runway 1432, the crossing runway. Once we land, we'll clear the runway to the left to the terminal, but since we're already late, we'll encounter a delay upon reaching the ramp. We're off schedule because of the delay leaving LaGuardia, and our turn to land took up some time, so the gate that we're supposed to park at will be occupied at the time we reach the terminal. 
We'll be assigned a new gate, which will also be occupied, but we'll have to wait for that plane to leave the gate before we can park there. The departing plane from the new gate will leave faster than the plane at the originally assigned gate. And right before we touch down, you'll notice that we'll make some S-turns to increase separation between us and the traffic ahead. This really is a busy airport. In any case, we're all set to land, so let's terminate the air portion of this journey from LaGuardia to PBI. Welcome to PBI. To keep the plane comfortable during the planing and for our next flight, if you could please just open those air vents above your seat once you're able to do so. Also lower the window shades. Please remember to take your complimentary earbuds for use on future Delta flights. On behalf of Delta, we'd like to wish everyone a healthy and happy new year. Thank you for flying with us today. C4, C is in Charlie 4, and unfortunately there's an aircraft parked there right now, so we're waiting for them to clear. They're going to move us over one gate, uh, which is also occupied, so they, uh, we're waiting on that airplane to push back here. They're telling us it could be up to 10 minutes, uh, so I apologize for another set of bad news here, but uh, we'll keep you updated. If you would, just keep your seats with your seatbelts fast, so we'll get you on the gate just as quickly as we possibly can. Appreciate your patience. Thank you. At our new gate here, uh, C2, is pushing back as we speak. It should just be a couple minutes for him to get pushed back and get his engine started up to get out of the way. And then we'll get you on the gate here. I do apologize again for this wait. I know that's frustrating. So we'll get you there just as soon as we can here. Uh, but if you would, uh, just keep your seats with your seatbelts fastened for a couple more minutes for me. And I'll get you on that gate uh, very soon here. Thank you.
right, I'm off the plane here in PPI. Boy, is it crowded in here. That aircraft that we just got off of is going right back to LaGuardia. Here at the Palm Beach International Airport. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm excited that I got to bring another airport to my channel. Remember that if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and remember that I'll be back again very soon with another video just like this.